Michael Joseph is originally from Allentown, Pennsylvania. His ability to photograph people together with their pets has made Michael one of the finest pet photographers available, and he's gaining recognition with his unique, award-winning style. Michael has photographed more dogs and cats combined than you could fit individually within each seat of any pro stadium around the country. Picture that. That's a lot of biscuits. When did you begin in your photography? Oh, I started photography well over 25 years ago um, in the professional sense of the word. And then before that, it was enjoyment, kind of an avocation, something for pleasure. What is your favorite subject to shoot? My favorite subject, obviously, is the specialty that I developed a long time ago, and that is specializing in photographing people and their animals. And I've traveled most of the East Coast for the last 25 years, photographing folks with these four-legged types and, uh, and exotic birds, horses, cats, dogs, but especially the family dog. And uh, it's been absolutely wonderful having kind of a niche or a specialty um, as part of our, our, our daily uh, type of photography that we love to do. What percentage of your success would you attribute to your equipment? Um, as far as equipment is concerned, that's kind of a double-edged or kind of a dual answer because quite literally equipment is extremely important and yet on the other hand if you have someone that really knows their thing and they know how to capture expression I mean you could just give them a box camera you could give them almost just the very most elementary of, of equipment that is uh, um, quite underrated and they could still do incredible work but really, when you're talking about working day in, day out, all year long, and throughout a career, we want to work with tools that, that are, are at your disposal that help you to do the job quickly, efficiently, accurately, and with the most, uh, I guess, consistency as well from day to day. So the tools really are essential and very important. Mac or PC? Mac! Absolutely. Um, really, it doesn't matter. It's kind of like one of the other questions that you had about tools and equipment. Um, you can get the job done either way. It's just that I've been part of the, call it the cult, since about 1986. Uh, I worked in a camera store in the Philadelphia area and they walked in, these executives walked in with this big box and it said Macintosh on it. And they said, we're now a Macintosh dealer for Apple and uh, you can get one of these things at employee price. And when I saw that you had a mouse and a screen and that I could make a price list or a, a brochure and I needed, needed really essentially almost no, uh, no real learning curve to go through or classes that I had to take or books that I had to read about MS-DOS or other types of, of computer language, I was hooked. So I got the first one probably about 1986 and I'm just kind of, I'm kind of stuck there. Well, if I went back maybe more than 25 years, um, maybe I would have become a plastic surgeon because really that's what I'm doing. Um, you know, we sculpt the face and work with the, with the individual's uh, facial characteristics and body types and, uh, and we do what we can with lighting and with posing and body blocking. To, to flatter the individual. And then, once we know what they're gonna order, we take those, those pose numbers, those individual files, and then we, now that we're in the digital age, we actually can go into some very tasteful and very beautiful manipulation, not only with a little skin softening or taking away a wrinkle or a blemish or a line, but correcting other, other things. Uh, with the ladies, I like to call it body sculpting. I can just do a little bit and take a few pounds off here and there where necessary that their own best friends or neighbors or their family members wouldn't even know unless they had a, a direct before and after to look at. So some of these things to flatter the people are just, they're, they're wonderful. So yeah, being a plastic surgeon could, be, could, have, been, could have been the thing because the ladies, they say, can you do this permanently? Can you just fix it permanently? And it's like, well, I can't really do that for you, but at least as far as that legacy and having something beautiful on the wall, you're gonna look your best. So some will even say, I wanna book this session next year because I'm gonna lose 10 or 20 pounds. It's like, no, no, we'll just take care of it right now. So I'd say a plastic surgeon would be it. What do you enjoy the most about being a photographer? I, I think a really good answer could be uh, that you get paid to do what you do. That's, that's really, 
kind of bottom line. In, in order for you to keep making people happy, you got to stay alive, and then it means you got to get paid. So it's really important. But really, the, the actual joy in the uh, more of the romantic sense or the classic thought, um, and with a little bit of sentiment, is the fact that you make people really happy. And you give them something that they just can't run down to any street corner and have made for them. Something unique, something different, and it is a legacy. It's something that, that goes on and on, it's something that they enjoy. Uh, for example, with the niche that I do in photographing the animals, the animals have a much shorter lifespan than a typical human, obviously. And so they're with us for just a, a more of a brief amount of time. And so how much more important or how beautiful the thought might be that I'm making somebody happy in the now with, with the pets that they're enjoying as family members. Uh, but then in some time in the future, and we don't know when that is, um, those pets are no longer with us. And so we have something that's just a beautiful remembrance. And that makes me happy. And I get paid to do it. It's really cool. What advice would you give to a beginning photographer? All right. Uh, when I'm working with young photographers or those that are newer in, in the industry, um, I recommend heavily that they find mentors that they're willing to, whether it's carrying their bags um, or that they're going to just soak up information like a sponge and apply it to their life and, and to find even more than one mentor. In my particular situation, as far as mentors are concerned, um, I was pretty much self-taught and of course uh, book taught as well. And uh, in college I kind of hung around some upperclassmen that, that turned their, their, their uh, bathrooms into dark rooms and they had all the equipment and so I just soaked up as much information as I, as I could um, from their knowledge pool. And uh, then I, I met a friend in the Philadelphia area, Nick, that graduated from Brooks Institute, and then we did some light commercial work together. But it was his next door neighbor, Bill, that was a Purina Chow representative, and he allowed us to start this program of photographing um, people's animals, their pets. And so that was sort of the initial springboard. But from that point, as far as mentors, um, I would say I went to two or three times to see someone from way back named Donald Jack back in the 80s that really it was a lot about the business of photography. It wasn't as much about the technique of photography, but about the business and looking like a photographer and acting like one. And I, I, I thought that that was just absolutely invaluable. And then sort of in this more modern age, maybe in the last 10 to 15 years, from spending a little time with Tim Kelly um, and also uh, with uh, Hanson Fong for his body blocking and his flow posing and working with speed and I mean, it just goes. I could I could talk about that for a long time, but those are some of the people that I've spent time with and invested time with to to bring in information so that it better's my game and improves my work. And of course, being part of print competitions and PPA and things like that too, where you get feedback. So that's those are my recommendations as far as mentor. Michael, thank you very much for being part of this right, cooking photographs channel. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. I am totally positive that people are gonna enjoy very much listening to what All you right. just said. This We're is cooking. That was... All right, well thank you. Yeah, and then Brantis wants a shot of two of us. Yeah, we need a picture too.